Welcome to Unmasking Humanity, 21 Questions with Joshua T. Berglund. I'm your host, Joshua, and thank you so much for being here. Um, wow, we've done three episodes so far. This is episode four, and each one has been so extraordinary and so unique and so special. Um, I think I always say that about all of my broadcasts, or at least most of them from the past, but this new format, I love. I love these questions because they're planned. I'm not guessing. I'm not leaving an episode going, gosh, I wish I would have asked that, or man, they need to come back for another conversation. I feel like each one of these episodes, we've gotten to know the guest on such an intimate level that it just doesn't happen uh, that I've seen with other broadcasts. And I don't want to pat myself on the back here at all because I can't even take credit for this idea. It just came to me. Like it was download. Um, but I love it. I'm enjoying it. The episodes are not real long. They don't go on for three hours. They're just, some of them are 30 minutes, some are an hour, but ultimately it's just getting to the heart of the matter. It's a lot less of me talking and giving my opinion, except for the opening. And, um, <laughs> um, and it's a lot more of the guest, which is, is why you're here. So thank you. Uh, thank you all for being here. Thank you for supporting all of our guests. Uh, Ferris, of course, Arnaki, um, Justin Breen, Jessica Lintoft, amazing guests. But today, again, I'm so excited. Um, I know Robert, and as I've said before, I don't really interview people I know, but I've gotten to know Robert. We've become friends. And the more I get to know him, the more I love him. And he is an interesting dude. Um, so smart. He's like an audio alchemist. I think that's actually what he bills himself as, but he literally is. He makes healing music but he also makes house music. He makes beats. He's so talented. I mean, he manages a record label. He does so many things. He's just a gifted guy. But it ultimately, uh, and those of you who already know him know this, the dude's all about community. He's all about elevating other people. He is all about healing and bringing the, making the world a better place, like doing his part and then finding others who want to do the same. It's so sincere. I mean, my very, the very first time I talked to Robert, we hit it off um, like we've known each other for a lifetime. And then we did a face-to-face -face Zoom call just chatting and so much synergy. So I'm pumped. I spent a lot of time with these questions, but I feel like these questions are entertaining. They're fun. They're interesting. And they're going to bring the best out of Robert. But at the same time, he doesn't know these questions. And, uh, and I don't know what he's going to say. So this is going to be a lot of fun. But thank you so much for being here. Um, we You can find these broadcasts on joshuatberglund.com under the World's Mayor Experience. Uh, we have both a virtual experience and we have a, an Omni Media platform. And if you don't know what Omni Media is, think about every possible medium of media. That's what we do. Virtual reality. We have books, interactive books. We have tons of different video categories, tons, like I think seven total, maybe eight now. Um, there's courses, there's free courses, there's tons of different books, there's movies, there's all kinds of stuff. So check out the World's Mayor Experience platform at joshuatberglund.com. And of course, if you're watching these clips uh, anywhere, thank you for your support there. But you should check out the platform. Uh, it, it's, it's growing, it's getting better and better every day. And I love it. But so grateful for all of you being here. So grateful for all of your support. Today is going to be so much fun. And you know, I think if you don't know Robert already, you're going to just absolutely fall in love with him. He's an incredible human, and I'm blessed to call him a friend. So without further ado, let's welcome Mr. Robert Alexander to Unmasking Humanity, 21 Questions with Joshua T. Berglund. Thank you, and we'll see you soon. Wait, I'm introducing him now. I'm going to edit that out. Whoop. <laughs> What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Oh, that was bad. <laughs> hey. <laughs> and we're back. for. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> B-roll. I'm, I'm going to leave this in, Robert. Uh, late. <laughs> because this is uh, when I when I did my intro, ladies and gentlemen, this is Unmasking Humanity, twenty one questions with Joshua T. Berglund. I, as I shot in my intro, I told you that Robert was a friend, and I meant it because we've been laughing, and I had to cut him off 
so we could start the broadcast so I could get into the questions because I didn't want to waste all of my energy <laughs> <laughs> laughing with him before we actually started the broadcast. But wow, that just sets the tone beautifully. I, Robert, welcome to Unmasking Humanity 21 Questions. It is so blessed. I'm so blessed to have you here. Um, Thank you. Before we get into the, the questions and put you on the hot seat, can you tell me, what are you grateful for today and why? This conversation, so magnetic, so powerful. Just, uh, yeah, why wouldn't I be grateful? I don't know. Why wouldn't you? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm grateful because I wasn't, I wasn't even sure what kind of mood I was in until you popped on and we started chatting. And like now whatever I was thinking about is like left me. So I'm so excited to have you here. Um, this is going to be fun. Are you ready for 21 questions? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Play. Now, now I'm feeling like a game show host. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> By the way, I've always wanted to do that. Maybe I should look into that. Okay. I think we're on to something. Yeah. All right. Question one, Robert. As an audio alchemist, what's the most unexpected ingredient you've ever mixed into your sonic potion? Unexpected ingredient? Yeah. Ooh. For for just one, just anything, right? Yeah, for like think about all of the mixes, these special mixes, the unique mixes that you do. And you have, I mean, I I talked about this in the intro, but I mean, you have some amazing sounds. And I don't even know where they all come from. So, what's the most unexpected ingredient in your alchemy that you've mixed? Okay, thank you, by the way. So, there, there is an unexpected ingredient that some people may not know, but I know to expect it and put it in there. The thing is, there was a time I ended up doing a session for somebody, and I asked him at one point, in terms of the sound and i normally don't do that these days i just trust and allow that to move through sure but he wanted something along the lines of like metal not metal like clink clink but like metal like dun, 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 dun. so i created something along those lines for him and i did i didn't expect that from me you know but somehow i i, I want to see if i can replay that actually because i'm curious to see where that went but it was something along the lines of creating something in that space I would have never imagined that. It's like gospel house music. No, actually, those go together really well. What am I saying? Yeah, I want to hear that. When you find it, I want to hear it. All right. Well, what? I might play some of the some of the stuff, but that, that's his private recording. So yeah. Okay. Well, sometime I want to hear it. I'll play some of the sounds I used. <laughs> okay, that works. Yeah. Maybe different different keys. So this isn't his, but it's his. Fair enough. Question two. <laughs> if you could remix the soundtrack of any historical event, which would you choose and why? Wow. That's good. That's really, really good. Historical event. First one comes through creation. Yeah, creation. Why? Why? Because that's that's the beginning. Or at least the beginning of a new phase. Wow. I'm not supposed to add too much commentary here in this. The, I just have like 50 more questions that I can't ask you now. We're going to have to do a follow-up just so I can. Yeah, B-roll. Oh, that's deep. That is not what. I, I had no idea. I'm just trusting stream of consciousness. Holy I don't think I could ask that question to a hundred people. I don't think I would get that answer. That is amazing. Whoa. Okay. Number three. In your journey as a music artist, what's the most bizarre place or situation where inspiration struck? Bizarre place. <laughs> My mind. <laughs> it was not, 
I could think of conventional. I could be like, I'm going. To, I was going to my former girlfriend's home, you know, you know, and I was driving this humming. But that that's like just I'm on the road. That's not a bizarre place. That's just a 101. But my mind can get pretty freaking bizarre. It's the most honest answer ever, though. <laughs> For me, <laughs> I was talking with a friend of mine, another friend of mine. And we were talking about subscription models for coming into this world. So you're going to choose the basic model of humanity, and this is this is this is the model. You cannot downgrade; you can only upgrade. And then you have the added, you know, the the aware or the expander model or the evolver model, where you can only again expand. But the thing is, you have added features and awareness of features that this one cannot go. They can upgrade to where you are, and you can only go up over time. So it's like, well, where, where do I go in this mindset, right? Yeah, it's it's pretty mind blowing, pun intended. I'm I'm sweating now. Like you made me laugh so hard, I started sweating. <laughs> oh my. Release, my friend. I'm release. My face. I should I should have brought a towel. Oh my gosh, I wasn't expecting that. Okay, I should have known though. Number four, if your life had a theme song. What genre? It's a number four, number three. What? Oh, it was number number four, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because number three, you was your brain. That was your That's answer. Right. Okay. Number four. Don't cut me off when I ask the question. I know nothing. <laughs> I know my own name. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was prepared for the interruptions, by the way. Number four. If your life had a theme song, what genre would it be, and what would the title be? Would it be the ex would I create the song or would it actually be um, a song that someone else already wrote? It's a song about your life, so it gets to be whatever you want. Awesome. It would be a hybrid Ooh. between ambient and <laughs> that it'll be ambient experimental because I have a lot more to play with. And it's called Never a Dull Moment. <laughs> Oh, I got to see. I, I, I want to take a deep dive into that, too. Jeez. Okay. okay. Number five. You're stranded on a desert island with only one instrument. What is it, and how would you use it to call for help? I wonder if a DA, like a D-A-W, like, you know, you know what a DA is, right? Digital audio workspace. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, like using like Pro Tools or Reason or Cubase. I would have my DAW. How what, would I call out? Would sound come out though? Because you didn't have speakers. Well, I have my laptop. No, you only get one instrument. Right. Right. Well, if I'm it's getting technical here. <laughs> Uh, are we talking? To, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's certain questions. Is like going to the grocery store to get food, or are we going to farmers market to get some apples? Kind of a thing. So, I probably would, if I had like an analog instrument. Yeah, let's go with the analog. Yeah, yeah. Let's go analog for a moment. <laughs> I'll do my best. And this is just me being funny. I'll take my six string and see if I could actually spell it out with the different like strings. <laughs> Wait, do you do Morse code on that? There you go. Let's yeah. see what we can do. Whatever you could play Morse code on. Yeah, yeah. E, 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 A, A, G. Just like, it's like, please. Maybe if I could actually spell it in a different language, maybe that could just be like some language that's just translate vibrationally to help. Wait, I think you're onto something. That could happen, I think. I don't know. Oh my gosh. Okay, number six. As a co-founder of, did you say it, WeJ? WeJ, okay. like DJ, but instead of the D, it's W-E. It's brilliant, by the way. As co-founder of WeJ, if you could DJ a party for any three historical figures, who would they be? Only if they'd be receptive to the music I'm creating. Lots to play with, my friend. Mm hmm Cleopatra. Whoa. I'm just thinking in the back of my head, these different people, you know? It's like inviting three people for dinner. Who would they be, right? 
Mm -hmm. Who would you want to DJ for, though? Because that could be a completely different thing. Like, you don't even have to like them. Yeah, three people in history, which goes into, like, what would I play? What would they be receptive to, right? You're the DJ. Got to read the room. Yeah, literally. Three people in history. Let's keep, let's keep this going for a while. Wow. I'm doing my, my best not to think too hard, but this is good. This, this is really, really good. My father, uh -huh. yeah, he's been gone since I was 10. He passed away. Uh, three people in history. And they're real, right? Yeah. Yeah. Merlin? Okay. I guess he is real. I might have heard. Cleopatra, your father, and Merlin. There you go. All right. Number seven. Huh. What's the most unusual way you've ever used sound to promote healing? Are we talking about creating something for somebody or just, just anyway? Because I know you're passionate about that. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, in this case, it wouldn't be did you, you said unusual, right? Yeah. An unusual I way. Unique because I don't really get requests like this, but there was someone who I know on the East Coast who actually asked me to create some music for her cat. And her cat was transitioning. So I used spoken word mm -hmm. from her and her son including singing, put that in, and there was music in the back. So there's this track to play as this cat is transitioning into, you know, that was almost 10 years ago. Why like my grandmother when she passed away. It's weird to me that it is, but it's not. Like my grandmother, my mother's mother when she passed away in 2016, I had a piece of music that I had and I played it for her. She didn't pass away during that time that she passed away like the morning after or something of that sort, but I was playing her music. It's like, have you ever heard of Thanatology? It sounds familiar, but I don't know. Thanatology is like, there's like different practices from what I remember hearing that are helpful for those exiting you know, their life. So it's not, you know, like, ending someone's life for them you know it's not, not, like, not like a borkianism or something you know <laughs> but basically this is these are for someone to feel more at ease so they can ultimately transition they can like leave right mm -hmm. so i wasn't doing it for you i was doing it for a cat i love my animals i would do something like that especially I mean, it's I'm funny but not funny at this point. actually it's not funny at all it's pretty powerful it is they, they're really appreciative well yeah, and I can see both sides of that because I mean, honestly, if I didn't love my animals so much, I I wouldn't think of doing something like that, and I would go, oh, that's goofy. But I love my animals, and like, you know, when you lose them, I just my dog just died like three weeks ago, yeah, and yeah. by a car, and like, uh, freaking sad. I mean, you know, I it, if you need any music for that, by the way, let me know. I got you covered. I appreciate you. Thank you. Um. <clears throat> Oh, number eight. If you could give your younger self one piece of audio advice, audio advice, what would it be? In terms of music creation? Answer how you feel then. Okay. Yeah, but we'll go. You can go with that because that was your first instinct. Yes. Appreciate you in, in that stream of consciousness and that sock. Always follow your heart. It's not thinking. Like if you look at me, it's not thinking. It's heart math or heart thinking. No, I feel you. I understand what you mean by that. And the only reason why I have is not that I know how to play an instrument. But when I was teaching myself to DJ, when I was in my head trying to do the things and find the things, I sucked. It was horrible. But if I allowed myself to just get in my heart, it's kind of like when I speak, 
If I'm in my head and I try to talk, I'm an idiot. But if I speak from my heart, I mean, I may say stupid stuff because I'm passionate, but it's authentic at least. Yeah. And so the sounds that I was creating and I was learning to create when I expressed in my heart, it, it did something different. It was it was like I didn't need the technical skill as much because of what I was letting flow through me. Yeah. I relate to what you said from that standpoint, for sure. Beautiful. It's It, it does flow to that same space too. So, yeah. Nice. Number nine. <clears throat> In your work with life rhythms, what's the most surprising discovery you've made about the connection between sound and wellness? This one's going to be a bit more straightforward and a little abstract, right? Mm. Well, with my business, Life Rhythms, it's like your life, your rhythm. And at one point, it's like your life, your rhythm, your frequency. So I can give you a piece of music and say, this is going to help you heal X, Y, Z. And you can listen to it. This, this didn't do, I don't want to swear. So this couldn't do anything for me. It's going to do a shit for me. <laughs> <laughs> so in, in this case, if I create something, Let's say I create something for you in relationship with your dog. You know, if it's a grieving piece, you already have a connection to that. Huh. So I can create the exact same piece of music for somebody else saying, oh, yeah, well, I made this for somebody else, and this is going to help you too. Although it may not hit, it may not resonate versus me saying I made this specifically for you. It's made for you so it can help you with your healing. It's not guaranteed. Although you have another tool in your artillery or arsenal or artillery or your toolbox basically to help you in that. So basically it's personalized, you know, a personalized solution is most likely more effective for what I've seen. It's like when mom makes a sandwich versus when you make one for yourself. Kind of, sort of. I mean, the energy is there too, you know, yeah. I think I might've shared that with you too about the energy and infusing food and what have you. Yeah. No, we can discuss that, but we, we should sometime. Yeah, no, you'll appreciate it. Yeah, for sure I would. I actually like all of our conversations. Number 10, <laughs> if you could create a genre-less collaboration between two unlikely artists, who would you choose? First two came top of my mind, Cardi B and Yanni. Hold on, I gotta think about that for a second. Yanni, I know. Wait, so would would Cardi B rap over Yanni? Who knows? Maybe she's the one playing the instruments and he's rapping. <laughs> <laughs> I need I need I need someone to gener generate an image of Cardi B and Yanni doing a collab. Oh, wow, that's fun. I would not have expected that answer. That's <laughs> so good. Yeah, loading. Yeah, loading. So good. <laughs> Number 11. This is familiar. This is a familiar question, but it's different. What's the weirdest sound you've ever incorporated into your music? Where's sound? Toilet flushing, door <laughs> slamming, clown laughing. Whales farting, you know? <laughs> not, 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 not really, but. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> no, I just. So the closest I can get to it, which might be a bit obscure, is that I wrote this one song and. I don't think it's necessarily weird in that way because believe me, if I thought of some obscure thing, I, I would say in a heartbeat, it was that car who, you know, honked a horn or something or, you know, but there was a point where I was missing this one drum beat and I was just thinking about how I can emulate that in my head. Hmm. And I just went and I took that and I put that into my track. And it's called Turn It Down and Wrap It Up. And it may be on my next album. I'm going to send it to you. And my friend told me, who I collaborate with, his name is Walker. He goes, it sounds like it'd be porn music. <laughs> and when I play that for certain people, like, damn, that song is sexy. So at one point in the song, you'll hear this one beat. 
and it's me going interesting yeah so it may be strange or unusual but in essence it's just breath that wow you know that's interesting too because it reminds me of there's the rolling stone song where there's a you know the there was a breath in when and her singing like her voice scratched but they left it in it reminds me when i was doing the voiceover work for my first book the devil inside me and you know i was living downtown so we had to deal with the trains and i would have to re-record every time because i didn't have all the software to do the, do it the right way yeah so <clears throat> there was this amazing scene that i put everything i had into it uh to to for this this one particular section and the train came by and tooted its horn and it was a crap but then i went back to listen to it it actually fit perfect into the track and i didn't do it on purpose obviously but it just worked it's it's interesting how that can happen sometimes like you reminded me of something it can, it can add the yeah. mistake, it can add value to what you're doing in ways sometimes that you don't expect i totally forgot about that like two really quick things without getting too much over it um hmm. when i recorded my first album 21st century flow i created a continuous mix and that continuous mix has different sounds you know, and so one of them is, is I recorded all of Air Street. Of Air Street? All of Air Street. Oh, okay. In downtown LA. Yeah. So I recorded, like there was like a bell in the background, like kind of like a church bell, but that's not weird. You know, there was a time where I recorded like a rainy day and my girlfriend at the time was like, wow, you know? And so I, I put that in there too. And there was even a point too where it, it, it was just something in relationship to, to like the music, but I remember Putting, putting certain elements in certain places, right? And if, oh yeah, at the very end of that album, there was a train that I would hear by where I live here in Ventura, California. And at one point I was like, wait, that sounds cool. So I, for a moment, I recorded it. And that's at the very end of that first album. Hmm. So it's just it's just wild how different sounds can fit in and they, they blend in perfectly. That's awesome, I like that. <clears throat> Number 12. Oh, we're in for a good one. I wrote it when I I just started laughing when I. <laughs> okay, because it's such a you question, and I mean this with like all the love in the world. Such a what question? It's it's such a, <clears throat> it's a it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a question that only I would ask you. I think like you're the oh, okay. I would ask. Go you. If you could design a sound bath for extraterrestrials. What elements would you include? Well, first. <laughs> For sure. You got to bring that one back on the remix. Yeah, yeah. yeah just, just to make sure. We're going to play that one backwards just to make sure they heard it the first time right up, right? <laughs> Sorry. I know you're drinking. <laughs> Hopefully. I keep going. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I, I might just totally turn this one around. You know, I am curious to see what they may have not have heard before to get them acclimated to what certain instruments may sound. So I've done digital sound baths. So one thing I'll include is the ocean. Mm. I'll include piano. I'll include maybe a cello. Ooh. Um, there might be a couple animals like birds, maybe owls, birds. Um, cause I do digital sound bath experiences. I don't know how much I've shared with you in relationship with that. Um, maybe, uh, a very gentle humming, you know, that's very melodic, you know, in a very human essence. Cause remember this is, these are for extraterrestrials. They may already have it down. Oh yeah. I remember that from like thousands of years ago or something. Right. So it's like bringing in these certain sounds that not necessarily chimes, like maybe. So it's more of like a sensory curated experience. So, you know, this is what the beach sounds like. What like, about a heartbeat? I, I do that. I've got to capture yours, though. Oh. That was a really good answer. I like that. Um, <clears throat> number 13. Thank you. As Evlov, if your music could instantly solve one world problem, what would it be?
What's the opposite of harmony? Disharmony? There you go. That's exactly what I would be working with because it's within themselves and everybody else. That's like the perfect answer. Gosh. Thank you. Perfect answer for you. Like, in other words, like that's, if we were playing Family Feud, that would be the number one answer kind of thing. Like Survey it, says. Yeah, it fits you perfect. Number 14. What's the most challenging aspect of being an audio alchemist that people might not expect? <laughs> that what I'm offering may be too good to be true. Because when I'm sharing with people what I do, you know, there, there's different levels of awareness, right? So when people say, well, what kind of frequencies do you work with? And I say, well, I work with your frequency. Well, how do you do that? Well, I do that. Well, I don't, I don't get it. Like, so I'll, I'll just listen to YouTube or I'll just go to a sound bath. Well, I'm not putting those down. I mean, those are other options, but it's like, imagine connecting with something very unique. So it's like, no matter how simple my process might be, no matter how powerful it might be, for some reason, I don't want to say the general public, <clears throat> a lot of people, they would immediately just want to register that and lump me in with all the other things that are going on with uh, sound healing. Yeah. So it's the misunderstanding component of what value they could really receive from me connecting with them and my process. So I guess you could say the challenge is being misunderstood. It's such an epic epic answer and yeah. true and and i having getting been able to you know meet with you and talk with you and then listen to your music and hear your passion in the free-flowing conversation not you know set questions your passion and your 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 vision and the, your expertise in this is just like without a doubt and so to me it's worth listening to you go through your process to talk because like at first initially i'm like well this is interesting but like how much you know i mean like is this like a real thing and the more i've talked to you and the more i've learned and the more i've started to understand i'm like i mean i'm i'm impressed like i'm blown away and i mean my mm -hmm. goodness people go get customized skincare and customized supplements and customized cologne and perfumes and you know we're not all made the same and what works for one what won't work for another and so it makes sense what you do and if people are going to go for you know for sound healing and do those therapies like why wouldn't they want to take it a next step further and actually have someone work with them on an energetic level a soul to soul level so they actually have a feel for it instead of just going to a youtube video and go oh that's 9000 frequency hook me up put in my headphones and blast it you know like what you're doing is, what's your situation? What's your trauma? What are you going through? Okay, let me go in and mix this up for you and here you go. And and from what I've learned about some of the people you've helped, it really freaking works. It's amazing. So kudos to you, my friend. Thank you. And not only that, they also say to you like, wow, your music is so helpful. And I'm like, well, you're the main component of it. So it's really not me. I'm, I'm just adding to it. So it's amplifying what your what that inner essence is all about. There, there's so many levels to it. So regardless, though, thank you. Thank you so much. I think it's beautiful, man. Number 15. If you could turn any everyday sound into a chart topping hit, what would it be? <laughs> any sound without putting anybody down if it's anything it's having compassion because they have every single right to receive attention and authentic visibility um someone who is unfortunate on the streets and talking with themselves because of whatever's going on in their mind and they they may be in that and somehow they're getting enough revenue where they can self-sustain and ultimately flourish
another answer I would not have expected. Holy I haven't wouldn't be expecting that for myself either, and just trusting was coming through. Wow. Because people can relate. Hey, I remember hearing that before. Wait, wasn't that guy on the street earlier? Or that, that kid, you know? Yeah. And now he, here he is, you know? Or she, they, whatever you want to call these days. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Number 16. In your experience, with is it JOMO or J-O-M-O? -O? Yeah, JOMO. JOMO, okay. In your experience with JOMO music, what's the most unconventional way you've seen an artist flourish? Mm. So this is a newer role, and I haven't been really talking much about them. In, in a live setting, so this oh. this is kind of interesting. You know, I can make a new question for you off the top of my. No, head. no, no, that's okay. That's okay. Um, it's really been amazing. This this is just probably it's there's a reason why it showed up. So I'm not even offended. I haven't even made a proper role about or announcement about even me being a label manager. Oh, so even better. This is even better. <laughs> <laughs> so this this is good. I didn't know I wasn't oh. supposed to talk about that. Oh, it's it's okay. No, no, you're you're. So we're in the process of some really cool things. Let's just put it that way. That that's my intention. And um, Levy Group Media, Glide Brothers, that company, you know, who I'm in touch with with the organization, they're very happy with what I'm doing. And so when I'm connecting with these artists, and I'm seeing what I'm doing to work with their catalog and cleaning things up and getting getting the inner workings of how that stuff works, because we're talking about a company that's that opened up Jomo. Um, you know, one of the guys, he's been doing online music promotion since the mid-90s. Oh, wow. So prior to, like, Google, like, like YouTube and all that, right? And so they partner with channels that have, you know, hundreds of thousands of subscribers. So remind me about the, uh, the question you have again. I want to make sure I'm answering it clearly because I'm just setting it up to... Well, it's... It, the question simply is, what's the most unconventional ways you've seen an artist flourish? Well, when I think of unconventional, I'm thinking of unique. And I know there's different platforms that are out there that provide exposure for artists. And I know the artists who are on board, um, they all, they, they, there's different genres for sure. It's a genreless label. Mm -hmm. So I know for me, being one of those artists on the label, how I've been able to flourish is, mm -hmm. you know, paying attention to my art. And at the same time, I've seen things attract in that way, like having the opportunity to not only be an artist on that label, you know, to have music distributed under that label, um, also being asked to be the label manager of that. So, I mean, I'm sure each artist on that label has their success story and they're, they're doing great things wherever they are in the world, whether if it's in like Latvia or in Kiev or in Tel Aviv, you know, or Southern California. <laughs> so I, I guess, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, paying attention to one's heart and going that path, <clears throat> maybe that might be a good way for me to fully accurately answer it. That that would be a good unconventional way. I think that it's unconventional. I think your success is unconventional in the sense from, because of it, tying into the question, the fact that you were picked out of your own label to manage the artist, it says a lot about you and your heart for not just artists, but for people in general and the way that you care and the way that you're so in tune, not just with yourself, but other people and the way that they show up and what they're going through. I mean, you really have a gift for that. Getting to work with a tender hearted artist or an artist that may be a little bit more sensitive because it's hard to be an artist. It's not an easy life. It's like a tortured soul thing. Yeah. To have your type of personality there to manage and help guide and assist them is a win. I mean, I, I, I'm going, man, what would, how, how would life be different if he managed Death Row Records? <laughs> I don't know. I, what if he I don't know how it worked out now that I say that out loud. But I mean, you know, like, 
you always hear like Doc, the guy that managed Motley Crue, and you hear about those really crazy managers, and and then you have you, which is the opposite of those. And to me, you're what an artist needs. So to me, I think you're the success story. Thank you. It's interesting how I was mentioning about myself as an example on that too. I think if somehow, if I somehow got Death Row Records, I would have an homage, like homage to it, but somehow the name would change to Heaven's Isle. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> what would that get? What would the game? Would be like, what, would, what would that be? I guess it would be like prayer hands and. I guess Snoop would be changing his name to Lion back again. There you go. How long did that? Li Never mind. That's a qu extra question. Another question. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah. All right. Um, if number seventeen, if you could create a musical time capsule for future generations, what five sounds would you include? Okay. So sounds or songs or sounds. music sounds. Sounds okay. You can do music if you want. If music comes to you quicker, you can do music. Sounds because five sounds is different than five genres. Um, wow, some type of sample from an 808. Most likely like a grand or a baby grand piano. Some type of synthetic sound designed by a looper. Yeah. What about, what what about uh, what do you think about the violin? Yeah, I was either thinking, well, like a cello or a violin, one or the other, but I'm, I'm down with that. We'll, we'll stick with violin. Cellos are cool too. Yeah, cellos are dope. <laughs> and also, For those trendsetters out there, uh, a uke. <laughs> Very good. Very good. N number 18. What's the funniest misunderstanding you've encountered when you're when you are explaining your work to someone? Ask me that question again. What's the funniest? <laughs> misunderstanding you've encountered when explaining your work to someone Stanley. well you must be everything <clears throat> part of me you must be everything to everybody like you, you do it all <laughs> it's like no, it's like thank you for the free session. No, it, well, it's it's not free. I'm just not charging you for it. <laughs> yeah, because remember my my work. People say, well, what do you do? And I share with them what I do with the different brands that I have, and in me participating. So when I share what I do, it's like I'm talking with a person that would be like wondering, so how's the job search going versus how's your workload looking? It's sure. a whole different perspective, right? Yeah, yeah. So when I share with them, some people they just don't know. Like, whoa, what's that's a lot. You know, what am I supposed to say? Well, I just do stuff. Yeah. So it's like, wow, you, you must be everything to everybody. Like you do everything. Well, no, no, I, I don't believe me. I, I, I don't want to do everything. <laughs> uh, you know what? I relate to that because, you know, I would go to all these business seminars and I would speak at events. And when I was doing that more frequently than I am now, Everyone wanted me to have the, this 30 second pitch for what I did. I'm like, I, I like to help people. I mean, that would like, that's my safest answer. And they're like, well, you can't make money doing that. I'm like, then what are you doing? <laughs> well, I mean, how do you, like, how do I, how do you narrow down when you have your, when you're an artist or a creative and you express yourself all these different ways? Like, how do you put that in a box? I mean, I created media company in a box to try to put it all in a box to make it easier to explain. And it's still not easy to explain. So I've gotten better at it for you who has all of these different talents and ways that you express too. I would imagine that's maddening. Like, how do you put that in an elevator pitch? I've gotten so much better. I've gotten so much better at that. 
Really? You know, if I can talk with my previous self, it's one of those things that someone says, well, what do you do? Well, what context am I in? Am I in chamber of commerce? Am I at a musician's thing? You know, so if you're open to it, just an idea. Yeah. Um, if there's a, let's say we go to like a chamber of commerce meeting, you and I, uh -huh. we get flown out to some place, you know, like in Florida or something, like St. Pete, you know, kind of, you know, luxury. So what do you do? Oh, well, you know, honestly, we're, we're doing some really powerful things in media and tech. We're doing some really cool things helping people too in, in lots of different ways. More than happy to, you know, truncate with any questions. So I'm not understanding. Well, I mean, what industry are you in? Oh, well, I'm in the wellness business. No kidding. Well, I have a music wellness business and I also have a content creation business. There can be some really cool overlap with where those things are. I'm also part of a tech company that works with wellness too. Wow, really? So it's like, it's creating it in a way where there could be openers. And there's going to be some people that are going to be like, that's cool. Or that's nice. And it's like, well, it's like saying I'm fine. But what does fine mean? I won't even go there, right? Mm -hmm. So the right people will be like, I'm curious. Like, it's kind of like, how's your music going? Like, can you be a little bit more clear? Like, what area, you know? Just so I can answer you more clearly. I want to make sure I give you an answer that you're happy with. This is why I love you. I love that. This, right back at you, brother. And I love that advice too, because that that's actually really good. Thank you. I don't. It, here's the other thing. I don't ever want to sound like I'm bragging. Because why? Why would you like come across as bragging? <laughs> I'm the one asking you questions, and you're the one supposed to be uh, asking yeah. me questions. I am asking you questions. All right. I'll, yeah, I'll you're doing great. Perfect. No, I don't. I don't know the answer to that. I but I look at it like, you know. Oh, best-selling author in four countries. I've published six books. I've won eleven film festivals. I've done this and that. And like, I can say all those things, and then also not feel accomplished whatsoever. And, you know, I have an idea for you too. You could always start off with if you're open to it. And again, only if you oh, want. You you speak freely with me if you want anytime. Okay. Well, I don't ever like telling people. Oh, you should do. I, I don't I don't subscribe to that. It's more of a matter of like, hey, just so you all know, you know, this is what I've accomplished. I, I'm not here to brag. I'm just letting you know, like just on paper, like this is what I've accomplished. If you want to know, this is what I've accomplished. These are some of the things. Well, it's on my IMDB. <laughs> yeah, take, take a look at this link. So I don't bio have... too, but yeah. I, you know, leading with that kind of stuff is 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 something that's been very uncomfortable for me because my goals are so much bigger than that. Yeah. And I just found a way. Like I had a vision, found a way. That was that's really what it was, but that didn't make me feel accomplished. There's very specific key markers that I have for me to feel like, okay, now I've accomplished something. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that for me centers around being right mentally, being right spiritually, and being right in my family, like having my family together. Like that yeah. those things matter to me. The success and the money and stuff like that, sure. I've, I've got big, it's not so much the money that drives me, but the experiences and traveling and getting to serve, getting to see the world's mayor experience become what I've envisioned it to be for all of these years and building. Like that's when I'll feel accomplished because I don't want to rest and I don't want to stop until I get there because it's a big goal. And I know that you have big goals too. Yeah. So I, but, but getting your wisdom on how you feel accomplished in the middle of the journey is something that I would love to hear. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Is that another question? We can save it for personal, and that's if you want to share now. If you have something to say about that, go ahead. Sure. Um, ask me the question again. Well, I guess the question would be: This is twenty-two questions officially now. It's okay. Um, it's a good number. It is a good number. The. Uh, it would be 23 because I asked you what you're grateful for. The still a good number. <laughs> the question is, how do you feel accomplished? Because I again, you the setting the stage, you have big dreams, you have a big vision, you have really big goals for what you want to do, and you're not there yet. I mean, you're but you're also accomplished. But knowing that you have that bigger dream and bigger vision and many more things that you want to do, how do you feel accomplished today? Yeah, this exact moment when you're still on your journey. That's good. That's good. And remember, everybody has their own version of what they subscribe to when it comes to success. Like, I don't care about driving a fancy car, living in a mansion. I care about feeling comfortable. 
Mm. So there's certain things that are big, like feeling certain weights, pressures, you know, um, social things that might be coming up, health stuff that might be coming up. Like some people may think I'm doing good. I may not feel that way, but just because I feel that way doesn't mean it's true. Yeah. So this is a really beautiful reflection you're giving me. So it's not like I'm thinking, oh, like I'm crap, you know, look at me, I'm a failure at the same time, you know, for me, I need to take rests. Like I need to stop. I know how to self serve you know, I have, some people don't even realize they even have a tank and they go right through it. They, they have the ability to self-preserve and to fill up that tank and fill up the reserves and move. So then if I need to remind myself that I am successful and I have accomplished things, sometimes it may not be easy for me to remind myself of that personally. And I'm being totally transparent because there are many things I would love to get off the ground for certain things. And at the same time, I might feel a whole other thing, like a whole other weight, like in the way or certain things. So taking a moment, what am I grateful for? You know, what what do I feel? Do I feel good? You know, even though I've accomplished all these things, do I feel good? Well, what can I really do to revel in this space? Like I had a really big breakthrough with one of my mentors yesterday, Ginger Adam Little. That's her name, Ginger Adam Little. I'll have no problem plug, <laughs> giving a plug toward her. and. It, it was just one of those things where I was so tired. I felt so tired from like lack of sleep the night before. I didn't even realize how big this thing was. And even now I'm still like, did that even take, what? you know? So I'm really good at turning something that from something into something. And there's times where I, might, I may not even realize I'm even downplaying my success. So reminding myself to just stop like, hey, look what you're doing. Like what you're accomplishing, because I may not feel big right now. It might be big to a lot of other people. It's true. So really taking the time to acknowledge it, journal it, um, taking the time to really like what what does feeling good feel like? What does pressing the pause button feel like right now? Yeah. Can, do we give ourselves permission? Because for me, it's not about well, I can't stop until I finish that goal, and I'll finish that goal and wait. Oh yeah, there's another big goal I want to accomplish. So. It's really about getting present. The more that I think about it, the more that I feel with it too, about what what, what feels like, wow, can I even fathom? Like, I did all that. That's, as you were speaking, I actually felt convicted a little bit about not feeling accomplished. Because today, you know, I left, I you know, I left what was home for me. Um, my partner, Jess, and two little girls that I help raise. And they are like, to me, they're my kids. Like they call me bonus dad and mm. my youngest called today. And I haven't, you know, I haven't seen her in a month and uh, it's not been easy because I, I miss them. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, but that said, she called me today, like super excited. And that was great. And that's always nice to hear her excited. But <clears throat> she said to me, we were talking about playing go fish and and i said something about um like you know we'll we'll make a date to do that and like we'll play like virtually you know yeah and she said oh like a daddy daughter date and you know they're not my kids but they are you know yeah. And for me, that was that was a that's that's a victory. That's a um, that's an accomplishment for me because I wasn't a good dad with my own children um, when I had a chance to be. Um, I gave my twins up for adoption, and of course, I pray every day that I'll get to see them again. And um, you know, my oldest daughter is back in my life, but the, you know, that relationship's not where I want it to be, even though we're getting closer Yeah, because, you know, things have happened in the past, you know, I wasn't a good person at all. And, uh, but to hear that today for me, like it kind of, not that I'd like go, go throw myself a party, but it does remind me that I've accomplished something. So I just yeah. want to add that to what you said because I, I felt convicted when you were talking and like 
no, Dad Gummit, I have accomplished things. I've learned to be a good dad where kids actually love me. <laughs> so that's huge. The, for me, that's a win because I didn't even know how to be a dad four years ago. And now, like, it's my favorite thing in the world. That's all I want to be is it, you know, I want to be a husband and a dad and, yeah. uh, and go help people. That's what I want to do. All right. So thank you for sharing that. That's a really important thing. I mean, there's times where I would love to do more in my world. And I don't feel like a failure. I feel like a best kept secret. <laughs> and at the same time, there it's just it's positioned positioning in a different place. You know, it's positioning myself in a different place where I'm connecting with it. It's like we're we're in this room where people are looking at us like we're three fries short of a happy meal. <laughs> and we're not. And then we go across the hall and they're just like, Robert, Joshua, oh my gosh, so good to see you. Like, what have you been up to? And their smiles are authentic versus like, I'm fine. Everything is great. And you're just like, oh, wow. Okay, are you? You know, kind of hurt my jaw a little bit, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's just interesting, you know? I'm sure, like, like for me, there, there's things I would love to just feel more relaxed into my world. And it, it's just human, you know? Mm -hmm. It's a whole other story. All right, you ready for 19? Please. If you could have a jam session with any natural phenomenon, what would it be? Natural phenomenon. Ooh, the Aurora Borealis. What is that? Or isn't it like, like the lights up there, like in oh northern, northern, northern lights. lights? Oh yeah, in Minnesota. Sorry, northern like, lights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. I don't know if the Aurora Borealis is the same thing. Maybe it's like a star cluster or something. I don't know. I'm not really into this um, astronomy too much. But Northern Lights, Northern Lights. That's a good choice. That'd be I dope. Like that one. Number twenty. Ah, oh. in your journey as a content creator, what's the most valuable lesson you've learned? <laughs> The customer isn't always right. <laughs> I agree with that. I've been a jerk customer before. <laughs> yeah, that that that's one of them for sure. Not you being a jerk customer. <laughs> no, no, but I have. <laughs> and I also agree with your sentiment from other customers too. Yeah. Whew. I like that. Number 21. Oh my gosh, the last question. No. It's funny, like the first of them, you're like, okay, we got a ways to go. And then you look down, like, crap, we're at 21 already. Like, what happened? All right. All right. This one's all right. Take a deep breath for this one. All right. If you could give everyone in the world a personalized sound experience for a day, what impact do you think it would have? The ones that are receptive to it and ready and really taking it in and really choosing to benefit from it, it you would probably be feeling a pretty significant shift in the world. For those that may not know what to do with it or they're completely just like completely opposed to it, you know, I, I gave it my, my shot. You know, I did what I can do. It's really up to them. If they choose to come back, okay, fine. But those who experienced it, most likely we would be able to feel it. Is it, it, is, it, is it clarity? What is it? Um, the magic of what they're experiencing in their direct experience. No, that's good. That's good. Wow, man. You know, I, uh, I just, I love all of your answers. They're great. Thank you. They were fun. They were different. They weren't what I expected. Uh, you were great. Thank you. You survived. Um, I want to give you the opportunity to have the last word and also make sure in the, in your last word that you plug where people can follow you, where they can support you, where they can hear your music, where they can, like anything you wanna promote, anything that you wanna say, you get the last word. 30 second elevator pitch? Whatever you wanna do. No, I got you, I appreciate you. You can take five minutes if you want. 
hi, I'm Robert Alexander. <laughs> Are you sick of, <laughs> there we go. This is exactly what I'm gonna do. Hi, my name is Robert. You're gonna be hearing voices like this. You're gonna be hearing music in the background and it's gonna sound so templated and so generic that you're just gonna think it's just one of those same old recordings of guided journeys. Well, guess what? It's, it's not gonna work that way. So right here, right now, we are designing a reality that works best for us. It doesn't have to be science oriented. It doesn't have to be spiritual. You know, we all get to have our own connection to what that might be. And so there's ways to cultivate community like the way that Joshua and I have, and we're continuing to expand upon it. I don't want anyone to ever thrive. I want them to flourish. It's a big deal. So best way, you know, so much, Sure, where this is all going to be placed, wherever it is, whether if it's like a comment section or you know, wherever my information is, all you have to do is either click on life rhythms.us or see where there's other links that might I don't know if there's any other links that are going to be tagged or anything like that. It looks like they will. Okay. If you're like, this guy sounds cool, will you remember me? Pretty big chance I will. You know, I'm really good at that. For me, I'm not about yes, I'm about yes. There's really cool people like ourselves out there. It's really that simple. Um, there's lots of things that I do, as you can see. If you made it to the end of this interview, thank you. You know, it's about having fun. Hopefully you're feeling nourished. You know, it's, I know I'm not for everybody. I don't need to be for everybody. So at the same time, I'm doing some really cool stuff with music, as you could tell. I'm doing some cool stuff with uh, sound, I guess, music, sound. <laughs> and song they're all very different i had no idea so anyway it was just one of those i mean sound and music you know totally different thing but yeah so i mean i am on facebook you know i'm also on life rhythms.us like i was saying before i'm on linkedin um chances are if you reach out to me through my personal page or through my website hit me up if you have my number text me call me and oh yeah leave a message Leave a, leave a message and leave your name for sure versus like hello 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 may i please speak to mr robert alexander <laughs> who is this well my name is template from template company and i'm calling to see if you have your cable bill well cable internet or cable itself because i have cable internet so would you like to renew your your, your cable bill no, I, I like to hang up on this call now. <laughs> leak, leak. <laughs> yeah, playing in traffic is not my thing. Okay, so yeah, laughter is good. It's okay. Laughing is good. So anyway, I, I won't go too far off the radar. It's obvious I need to get some food. But uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you for making the time. I, I'm, I'm going to keep it as simple as that. You, you know where to find me. <laughs> it's be, I see some cool things unfolding with him and me. I'm sweating again. He's, but you, doing a, this guy's doing a hardcore detox over here. <laughs> Natural detox is sweating away and laughing. This is great. <laughs> I've never sweat from laughing before. <laughs> You're just killing me, man. This is like a real time live event oh. here. This is awesome. Oh, gosh, I'm sweating. But you have to have the last word. Say goodbye to everyone. Goodbye to everybody.